Matthew, thank you very much for joining me. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about Sloan & Bloom? Sloan & Bloom is when the shops in Sloan Street all get together and decorate their shop windows in on the Chelsea Flower Show. There's a little bit of a competition though. There's a little there bit is, of a yes. Spirit. There's quite a few. There's about 30 exhibits going on and we've recreated Jo Malone's Red Rose Bath Oil out of flowers. Oh my goodness. Um, so obviously, the bath oil is absolutely fantastic, it smells glorious as to your displays. Can you tell me a little bit about the construction of them? The construction is actually um, plywood with oasis on the outside, covered in chicken wire to hold it all together, ah. and then we place the roses in to form the actual um, bottles. The bottles of oil. And how many flowers have you used? About 5,000. 5,000? Yes. Very impressive. With roses, um, peonies and carnations all mixed together in really lovely sort of strong pinks and reds with the idea of fragrance as well, so bringing out the red rose fragrance. Now fragrance I think is something that's really important when brides are choosing their flowers for their reception. Mm. Um, can you give us a, a couple of tips please? Well, I think it's, people um, see magazines and they see the wonderful pictures, but they don't realise that these flowers are going to smell. And there's nothing nicer than walking into your wedding reception and going, the flowers, you can smell them, how wonderful. You're sitting at the table and you get wafts of lilies or lily of the valley, or we did a wedding where we covered the whole church with mint. So you walked in and the smell was just absolutely lovely. You mix those with roses and thyme and the scents mixed together. It just adds another dimension to your wedding day. And for brides looking to enhance the, the fragrance of the flowers, I'm sure Jo and have a couple of tips. Can you, can you mm. let us into a couple of secrets? Well, a couple of lo lovely ones is like you can spray the napkins with something like white hyacinths cologne, which is really nice. Um, or they also suggest that you, know, you choose a perfume for yourself, that you spray one perfume at the front and one at the back. So as you move down the church, people get a different um, um, sense as you walk around. Fabulous, and I know they've got a new fragrance coming out. They have. Can you tell me something about that? A little vanilla anisease, which is beautiful. It's a really, really beautiful perfume. With a rather special... Yes, now, it. you know the vanilla pods? They actually come from an orchid. Oh, really? So it comes from the rare purple vanilla orchid, the actual scent, so it's actually quite a rare perfume. So if you had something like that and you're feeling particularly decadent and you're wearing the fragrance, you could actually use purple orchids in your floral arrangement. Exactly, you tie it together. Or red roses, you put red roses throughout your bouquets and things like that. Now, colour is something that brides are traditionally a little bit nervous about when it comes to flowers. Mm. What would, you, would you advise colour? Is colour something that's coming more? Well, it's interesting at the moment, no. Interesting, I would say, we've in, since I began in 2001, we've just hit our 500th wedding. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, we're still finding people are going for much softer colours. I think last year we did one strong coloured wedding. The rest was still very light, delicate, soft pinks, pale blues, whites, creams, greens. That sort of soft colour tone is still in fashion, I'd say. I love strong colours. <laughs> um, but I think people think that sometimes strong colours will date, definitely in sort of photographs and things like that, as will very sort of funky bouquets will date your images where they want them to be timeless. If you have something like vintage, it could be any period through history, really. And are people accessorising their flowers with anything? Are they adding anything into the bouquets or the arrangements? I think the trend at the moment is not. Okay. I think the trend is moving away Back from to adding basics. feathers and ribbons and diamantes. And I think the trend at the moment is really simplicity. Let the flowers speak for themselves. The bouquets are still quite small, delicate, small flowers, rather than the sort of dome of roses, much more in fashion at the moment. And also they return to the um, wide bouquet. Now, but not a wide shower bouquet, a wide posy. Oh, really? Which gives a much more light and delicate feel. Because sometimes if you have a hand tied, you have huge amounts of stems, and by the time you're holding it, it's your very heavy. Your arms are heavy. down by your ankles. And some brides have said, God, this is so heavy. By the time at the end of the day, <laughs> it's sort of doing this. So the wide, you remove all the thick stems. So you can use things with thick stems. You take them off and just use the, the catkins and the flowers and the buds, and you can create a much lighter bouquet. And you can create it so it looks forward as well, because the handle comes down and the flowers so you can angle them where you want to Fantastic. so that's the return really it gives a much more light and delicate bouquet and it's uh, more slimming as well on a more different slimming note. and also there's a real trend back to what the queen had for her bouquet really? she had orchids from around the globe from every different continent How extravagant wonderful <laughs> with no foliage but instead of the green tape they had white tape 
and they had a white ribbon handle, so it looked as though the flowers are floating. Gosh. It gives a really beautiful effect. So there's a trend at the moment moving back to sort of wide orchids. Perfect. Hence the vanilla and the is really sort of really coming Perfect into, for into it. season for it. Now, for a slightly more budget conscious bride, yeah. obviously wild orchids from around the world could be a little bit too expensive. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions? Well, first of all, I would say when you're getting married, the thing I wouldn't skimp on is your bridal flowers mm -hmm. because it's going to be in your photographs. Mm -hmm. But using flowers in season, they're the best quality. Mm -hmm. Using local, there's a big push at the moment for English grown, support English growers. There's a lot of English flowers out there, so buy English because it's, it, it's less to buy them because they're travelling less um, and it's good supporting our economy as well. Fabulous! Well, thank you very much for those very good tips. <laughs> You're welcome. And good luck with Slowly Bloom. Thank you very much.